Okay, we're back. Uh, a little bit more work here on this piece. The whole idea of all this part Okay, so there she sits on it. Uh, it would help. Help my sanding process. Like I said, a lot of my videos, I like to have a certain perspective uh, where things are. And this thing isn't really that important here. So for uh, sanding and flattening, what I have, this is a modified Cutsall dome disc, a carbide carbide burr dome disc, really old. Now, I hit nails with this, and I still wanted to save it. So what I did was I took a little Dremel kit, and I just cut these uh, slashes in here. What this did was created actually sharp ribs throughout this whole thing. Now, you don't need to do that to your dome disc. Uh, for flattening though, mostly, if you look across this, this is not set up really well for flattening. Why? Because right here, uh, so if you can add a spacer somehow um, and safely put that collet back on with enough threads to hold this disc, it's a good idea to kind of bury your shaft and your, uh, your collet inside the disc so that you could actually run that disc flat. Um, this setup here, I can't really do that. So everything I do with this, I'm gonna pretty much be working off of the, off of the front here. Now my other sanding disc, I use a wore out 60 grit and I have a brand new one. 60 grit is kind of my standard for rough sanding. We'll give a little touch of the chair. You see how it's all dark right now? I want real light with this because it's super, it's gonna leave a lot of divots if I don't go real light. Now you can just go right in with a brand new 60 grit and you can do everything with them if you have a couple to spare. Uh, they will tend to clog up, especially if your wood is not 100% dry. This wood, all this wood that I'm using has been sitting around for many years, so I'm, I'm good and sure that it's, uh, that it's nice and dry and it's not gonna really clog these up if I go easy. Now, these ones here, they're pretty rough from the saw. And so I would be going a little bit harder with that. That's where I would definitely use that tool. The other good thing about this tool is it's gonna instantly expose any bad wood, um, any wood that's going to give me a real hassle as I continue. It's gonna show it up as splintered wood, like really badly, it's gonna leave a lot of pockets. So it's primarily wood where either I have to be real uh, careful or even use a hardener. There is a wood hardener you can use on these types of surfaces, or I would just cut that out if I had that option.
the same thing as when you're carving, if you're sanding a carving, if you're rough sanding a carving after you have used a saw in it and you're trying to get a nice round piece, you're taking out all the all the bumps and humps, you're going down to the dips and that's your actual shape. That's what I'm doing here uh, as I go this way or that. Basically what you're seeing is, is that I'm, uh, I'm working with the roughness here and to check your flatness, now to check your flatness as you go along, this is where you want a nice flat bar. Kind of put it there and you can see, you can see where there's dips or rolls from when you milled it or whatever was there going on. Um, and like I said, this is not, these don't have to be perfectly flat for me. Uh, and I don't want to take too much out at the ends. This has a dip, so I'm just going to go with it. It's it's a little tiny. It's probably from visual. Uh, it probably dips all of a solid eighth inch, if even that, here in the middle. Not really worried about it, not too concerned. It's still going to be a nice bookshelf. Now one technique that I like to use when I get when I get the piece mostly sanded, this is rough sanded now, and I can see with the light. I like working where I can see the shadow. Uh, pretty much, I'm I'm seeing all the shadows of the the raised and lowered parts. I'm seeing where the good wood is versus the bad wood. Um, these slabs. I'll just t tell you, no, these slabs sat out in open air drying area uh, for a number of years and, and at times those, those areas did where there's a lot of rain getting on them, snow would pile up. So they have a lot of, they do have a lot of water damage. They do have freeze and thaw damage um, as they were drying, but since it's slab wood and it's for my project, I think it's actually going to add to and enhance the, the project. I'll show you the color after I get these cleaned off, but I'm just going to show you this technique now. Uh, as I'm working a piece, if I keep going this way, I'm digging into those bumps from the saw. So now if I go this way and I hold it with both hands, Right, because of the rotation of the tool, if I push, if I push into all those rollers, it's going to help me leave a clean path behind me or a tail. Here's the interesting thing too, as you're going along, now the rotation of the tool is 
going with the grain, I'm using this part of the disc not over here too much, but I can tilt the tool this way to almost diagonally comb so that I'm coming into the grain at an angle which is going to, it's going to less likely dig into the grain linearly, if that makes sense. If, if you keep the disc with the way the grain is going, it's going to want to dive in because it's peeling those fibers easier. So this piece here, I don't know if you can really see the difference. Oh, there it is. I see it in the camera. You see? You see here? This is from my fast rough sanding deal where I was going mostly this way just to get it rough sanded down. This is the second phase of sanding. Kind of flattens things out. When I hit knots like this, I slow down and I just I hit the knot slowly. Stuff like this, you can leave it when you do the 60 grit or even the 120 or the 80. That's, that's going to take it out. It's what you're looking for is nice and flat. If you have a few little dips here and there, rollers, leave them. You don't want to go past them because you start going past them and then you're going to get these huge wells and then you're going to be digging into the slab and having to redo the whole thing and then you're going to lose material. What we don't want to do is lose material in this area because that's what's holding our bench together, especially when we get here. What I will do is just a little light shave and cleaning. I'll leave the saw marks so that I know uh, that I didn't do very much there. This is our bottom. Our bottoms, I just clean them because they're going to get oil. They don't need oil, but it's good to do oil all the way around because when they dry you don't get a lot of drips. You can come in and oil these strips, leave this bottom part open. If you leave a part open uh, when you oil, then it's going to allow that piece of wood to breathe. Um, so it, usually I don't oil in the notches and so it, depending on whether these are exterior, if these are sticking out I'll oil them, but if they're not sticking out I'll just let the oil drip over and leave them because it it lets a little bit of that escape go. Here I oil this entire part. Um, so this is this is a slab one. This is the first phase rough sanded. Now remember that video. I don't know if you guys have seen on wood color. Um, what I was talking about here is where. These guys got water damage. They sat and, uh, you know, the rain got to them, the snow got to them, freezing got to them. So the, the pretty coloring you're seeing in this is actually bad wood. This is horrible wood for carving, but for slab wood, it's all going to hold together. If I did have a problem with it as I'm working on it and I needed it to stay there, I would A, either cut it out and replace it, butterfly joint it together, or add butterfly joints wherever I have major splits that are going to cause a disruption in the surface of the shelf. Here we have that lovely blue mold which is going to actually look beautiful um, when it's all final sanded and clear and has the nice varnish on it. And like I said, the blue mold in this uh, if you watch my other videos, there's a point where you can kill blue mold if you get all the bark off um, and you keep, them, you keep them drying good, get them up out of the piles of sawdust in your shop, full air flow all the way around, this you're going to kill that blue mold. Here. You and then it's going to be pretty. That. You get and rid for of like that slab and wood, it's not a bad thing. For carving, it's not so good because it's hard and splintery. It breaks off often when you're trying to carve. So those are just basic things. Uh, on coloring, this is all from sitting out in the wet for a long time, having water beating on it. It picked up some bad habits, but personally, I like the look. It's fine with me. There's a nasty split here. Um, as I go, I'm going to keep testing that edge. You just grab it, and you can actually wrench on it with your hands and feel and see if that split, if that splits apart, 
you want a butterfly jet that joint if you want to save this or you want to plan to remove it. Now here, because we have a knot that's going to hold here, and then all I need is holding here and here, and I'm good. I could add a butterfly joint here, but the other thing is too, I'm getting into weak wood out here. So, is it worth the effort? We'll see as we go through this process. I can always, it's, it's just going to be rough sanded down to 120 with uh, oil on it. When the oil gets on there, it may cause things to separate. Um, so I'm not real concerned about it. If it happens, I can always sand it down after it's dry and start over. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, Super Deck oil and varnish mixture so that it gets a good deep setting oil and uh, also the varnish works as a nice easy to wipe clean surface and add a little bit of protection. So. Those are the basic tips. We're just gonna clean here and probably tuck these edges in because this is the back of that one slab. So here is a pretty ugly spot. Uh, I, could, I could sit there all day and work at this with a sander or a grinder trying to preserve most of this. But since this is in the back and these ends stick out, I know they stick out. I'm not really concerned if I lose this, so I could cut here and just get rid of it because even if you cut here with the saw, this is damage from logging, from the log being moved. Uh, and this will dull your saw. When I slab wood and I hit these spots, usually uh, it does instantly dull the chain up pretty good uh, so I'm just gonna kind of stay inside of it and get rid of it because I don't really need it really short work of a bigger problem done solved it's in the back so it's not really that important as long as I don't lose too much of the wood that I wanted to preserve there that's mostly my concern is is function uh, and you know I could get crazy and measure and see exactly how far these protrude back but as I sand, I'm just going to round them in so they're, so they're not a real issue snag point. 